Hello everyone, it's Craig Campbell with Pastor Craig's Vintage Cards and today we have another edition of the 1956 Topps Deep Dive, a look at the common players of this wonderful set. Again, it's, it's my favorite set and uh, I really enjoy doing the uh, background on these players and today we have a player named Ray Jablonski. Ray Jablonski. And uh, this was really an interesting uh, deep dive looking at his information as I, I got ready to do this video. I think that you'll enjoy this. I, uh, I found it to be quite amazing. But first thing I want to notice is that you can see that Ray is a, a third baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. And he uh, appears to be the defender here. And he's got the tag down. The player is sliding into third base. You notice the uh, second base umpire out here. And also you can see the bunting, uh, the, the American flag on the what appears to be like the outfield tart possibly there. And uh, so I found that pretty interesting. But just a really a nice, as you kind of zoom in on it, uh, I, I just love these action photos and just all of the detail. Uh, the cloud of dust um, as he's sliding in. The, it appears the, that Ray's got the, the glove down and ready to tag the runner out. And just a fantastic action photo on this 56 Tops card. And... Uh, Ray is card number 86, and you can see he was born, or he's home of Chicago, Illinois. And he was born in 1926. And uh, Ray Jablonski has got a really an interesting story as we take a look at his career. I, uh, I really enjoyed looking, looking up his information, and I hope that you will enjoy this as well. Um, in August of 1953... As St. Louis Cardinals third baseman Ray Jablonski was putting the final touches on a brilliant rookie campaign, the club's broadcaster and former longtime National League catcher uh, Gus Mancuso said, the one thing about Jabbo, that was his nickname, the one thing about Jabbo is that he's got terrific potential as a hitter. Give him a year or so and he could be one of the best. The sporting news contributor Bob Brogue added that Jablonski provide the Cardinals with the most promising bat to join the club since Stan Musial. As Jabbo's 84 hits in the 1954 seasons at the one-third portion of the season, it appeared to threaten the National League season hit record. Veteran umpire and former Major League base, third baseman Babe Pinelli invoked another St. Louis slugger when he spoke of Jablonski. He's the best right-handed hitter to come into the National League since Roger Hornsby. He amazes me with his power. Unbelievable laudatory praise for this player, Ray Jablonski, to be mentioned in the same sentence as Stan Musial, and then to be said he's one of the best right-handed hitters to come in the National League since Roger Hornsby. And that was a veteran National League umpire and a former third baseman that said that. Unbelievable. But I want you to notice something. They're all talking about his bat. Uh, there was no praise for Jablonski's overall play as a right-handed hitting slugger as he made an adventure out of any ball that was hit to him. And we'll talk about that more as we go along. On October 1954, uh, Brogue, his take on Jablonski had changed considerably. Considerably. He was the one that said that he was... Uh, the most promising guy to come up since Dan Musial. Uh, this is what he said now in, in October of 1954, uh, basically a year later. He is murder defensively. He is rough on pitching morale. He, he had a hard time with the glove, just a hard time with the glove. After the 1954 season, uh, with the luxury of the third baseman Ken Boyer waiting to come up, the Cardinals traded Jablonski to the Cincinnati Reds. And over the next six years, Jablonski bounced between five franchises, including a brief return to the St. Louis Cardinals, where he was used mainly in a utility role. He bounced around the minor leagues until he retired in 1964. But it's amazing to hear the story of a guy that was compared with Stan Musial and to be the best power-hitting right-hander to come up for the Cardinals since Rogers Hornsby. Uh, his career, uh, due to his glove, just, just really never, never measured up. But let's take a look at him. Uh, Ray was born in Chicago in 1926, and he lived a, a mile south of Comiskey Park 
and he grew up as an avid Chicago White Sox, White Sox fan. Uh, he was a, a very accomplished singer and a piano player who had an eye towards a musical career, as well as being a very good football player. Um, he tried out for the Cubs, supposedly, in 1945 after he graduated high school, but then he went into the, the military and he was assigned as a to the military police battalion on July 19th of 1945 after World War II. And he spent most of his time in Paris and he received an honorable discharge in 1947. And he returned back to stateside and he, he did a, a tryout again with the Boston Red Sox. And he ended up playing with the Milford Delaware Red Sox, a class uh, D a minor league team, and uh, he had a really good season. He led the league with a 354 average and had 172 hits, and uh, the, he led the, the team to the uh, league championship. The Red Sox had a crisis in their farm system, evidently. Their farm director was fired. Uh, there was so much confusion in the farm system, and uh, they left. the. Uh, they failed to protect Jablonski, in the minor league draft, and he was grabbed by the St. Louis Cardinals. And he played for the Cardinals in their minor league system. In 1951 season in the minor leagues for the Cardinals, he won the Triple Crown in the Carolina League, where he hit 363 with 28 home runs and 127 RBIs. And uh, he was just, just a, a terrific hitter. And uh, he, he played shortstop, he played third base, they bounced around everywhere. And uh, they brought him up. They were aware of his defensive challenges, and they had so many minor league instructors, uh, old players, uh, work with with Jabo trying to get his glove uh, straightened away. Uh, during the 1953 spring training, uh, he he had a great spring. He hit six home runs, 15 RBIs, and he led the team with 38 hits. And he made the big league roster. And in 1953, April 14th, he made his major league debut against the Braves at Milwaukee's County Stadium facing Warren Spahn. His defensive challenges were exposed early as he made an error in the second inning, and, but he quickly made up for it with an RBI three innings later. Jeb Lonsky committed two more errors over the next three games. But they didn't prove to be costly. And then on April 21st, he hit his first major league home run it was a three-run home run against the uh, Cincinnati Reds. The team began to slide in 1954, his first uh, season, but he had a really good season up until July. Um, he had 21 home runs. He set the major league, uh, fran or he set the franchise's record that had been held by Johnny Mize when he had over 112 RBIs. And he was among the National League leaders. But here's the problem. Despite committing 37 errors, uh, the Cardinals kept him in the lineup, but they always had a, a replacement for him in the late innings. And, uh, he, just, he, he just did not have a glove. And, uh, but he managed to play in 157 games in that season. And he led all rookies, both in games played, home runs, and RBIs. And he came in third place for the National League Rookie of the Year balloting uh, behind Jim Gilliam and the Cardinals pitcher Harvey Haddix. He was selected to the Sporting News All-Star Rookie Team as a third baseman. But during the offseason, the Cardinals were very mindful of the defensive challenges. They tried to put him in many different places, and uh, he just just never fit in anywhere on the field. But he, he always was able to hit, and he uh, he had 84 hits at the start of the 1954 season through one-third mark of that season. He already had 84 hits. He was on pace to break the single season, the all-time hit record that was held by Bill Terry. And he was selected as a starting third baseman uh, in the All-Star game in 1954. And he actually had delivered the run-scoring single and scored the tying run uh, for, the Amer or for the National League as they... Uh, beat the American League eventually that year. Uh, later on, as the 54 season progressed, uh, Jablonski, his pace slowed way down, so he didn't come close to breaking the home run record. But he remained very productive. He uh, finished with 104 RBIs. And uh, he finished among the league leaders in every offensive category, uh, to include <laughs> nine stolen bases. 
Uh, well, that wasn't he. That wasn't the franchise league leader, but he did have nine stolen bases. He was a very slow player, but his offense was just offset by thirty-four errors. Uh, there's a story about in a 21, 23 to thirteen loss to the Cubs, he committed three cardinal errors, and uh, the commentator said it was probably one of the worst games in the seventy-eight year history of the National League. Uh, his mental mistakes were just. They caused so much frustration, uh, bad base running plays, just on and on. Uh, the manager, Stanky, had a, a fine system for players that were making mental mistakes, and he said Jeb Blonsky won the prize. Uh, he was just always getting fined. Physical and mental errors, and, and, and his weak glove just uh, made Jeb Blonsky eventually expendable. Um, in December of 54, the Cardinals traded Jeb Blonsky to the Cincinnati Reds, and uh, the Reds were happy. They said, we now have an exceptionally well-balanced attack between right-handed and left-handed hitters. And he thought that the Jablonski would really uh, make the team solid going forward for the Cincinnati Reds. But they were unable to improve his fielding also. Um, they had instructors work with him all through the year. They moved him around. He just could not get the glove straightened out. And moving from different positions just really made him struggle at the plate uh, pretty bad. And uh, he was hitting 200 on May 2nd. And uh, it was just a bad spring, a bad beginning of the year. And uh, eventually they optioned, the Cincinnati Reds, they optioned into to the Pacific Coast League um, in hopes that he would be able to get his play back on. Uh, he did make it back up to the major leagues in September. And... Uh, he collected three hits towards the end of the year. He finished with a 240 average with a 200 with a 221. Excuse me, he finished with a 240 average in 221 at bats. Uh, in the spring of '56, the Reds just they tried to pursue a a, a hands off approach for Jablonski, and hopefully he would get his his uh, his groove back on, get get back to hitting the ball pretty well again. And uh, he just really struggled with his bat again just because of, I, I believe, the, the uh, inability with his glove. And uh, he was just not able to maintain a, a good pace in that year. He went through a 1-for-28 stretch, uh, lining into a triple play, and uh, he just was not able to rebound. Um, in November of 1956, then the Reds, they traded him to the club, to the, the Chicago Cubs. And the Cubs were really hoping that he would regain his old form, uh, but he just was not able to do it. He was anxious. He was happy to be back with the Cubs, back in his hometown, and uh, but he just suffered a terrible cactus uh, season, spring training, and two days before the beginning of the season, he was traded from the Cubs to the San Francisco Giants. And the Giants were hoping uh, that at, in San Francisco that, he would be better off out there. Uh, he, he did okay in the second half of the season uh, with the Giants, and they thought he was going to be okay, but uh, he only got 230 at-bats in 1958, uh, finishing with 12 homers and uh, 46 RBIs. Uh, the Giants, again, they traded him back to the Cardinals, then, and uh, he was a pinch hitter. And after going hitless in 16 plate appearances, uh, the Cardinals placed him on waivers, and later on that year he was claimed by the Kansas City Athletics, and he made his American League debut against the New York Yankees and Bob Turley, and uh, he would spell Dick Williams at third base every now and then, and he connected on two home runs, and he had six RBIs in September, and the home run proved to be his last in the major leagues, as in October of 1960. Jablonski was outrighted to the minor leagues. Excuse me, in, in November 59, he was outrighted to the minor leagues. Uh, in 1960, Jablonski was a non roster invitee to the a athletic spring training, but he was among the first cuts. And uh, he did play okay in the minor leagues and uh, got him a, a call-up finally in September. And his last final at bat, he flied out to left field. And... Uh, that's the end of the career for uh, Mr. Jablonski. He just was unable to uh, 
field, which just really destroyed his offensive abilities. And uh, he just, uh, for somebody that had such high hope, um, to be mentioned with Stan Musial and Rogers Hornsby uh, for the hope of the uh, Cardinals and just to really struggle so poorly. Uh, it's just made such an interesting story on Ray Jablonski. And uh, Ray said after the 1957 season, he said, I don't think I've reached my peak yet. But by the time he'd made these quotes, his career was more than halfway over. He was once compared to some of the Cardinals' greats of the past. And over the last three years of his career, Jablonski was relegated to a utility role, uh, getting just 138 at-bats per season. Over an eight-year Major League career, he collected 83 home runs, 438 RBIs, and 687 hits. But much, much of it was accumulated in his first two seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals. And so Ray was started off with just tremendous power, tremendous ability. And uh, to be mentioned with some of the greats, uh, his career just did not pan out that way. Ray had uh, cards issued by Topps from 1953 to 1959, and he also had a 1959 Redmond card. But here's a picture of Ray Jablonski. Again, somebody but mentioned with Stan Musial and Rogers Hornsby and had tremendous power, but no glove. And uh, it really cost him a chance to have a productive major league career and to really to meet up to the expectations uh, that were given to him early on. That could have also been a problem for, for Ray, but... What an interesting story, and uh, there's so many people like him that have come through the major leagues with, with just tremendous potential and just for whatever reason uh, never really played up to their expectations. And uh, I just found this to be such an interesting story for a guy to be compared with Stan Musial and Rogers Hornsby and to bounce around with all these teams and to really struggle. His numbers, again, 83 home runs, 438 RBIs, but... You know, that was all pretty much accumulated in his first uh, two seasons, maybe through two and a half seasons, and uh, quite an interesting story for Ray Jablonski. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at his uh, career and his card, and uh, I just really enjoy these 1956 tops. I love the action photos, but I really like the stories behind the players. Uh, we have the cardboard here, but, you know, th these are actual people that had... Uh, real lives, and it's just really interesting to understand and to look a little bit deeper as we do this deep dive on the 1956 set. Everybody, thanks for watching, and have a great day.